I like to call this regular uh, council meeting of November 13th to order. Would everybody please rise for a moment of silence and let's remember all of those who passed away during the month. Please salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Uh, Mr. Peza. Here. Ms. Cohen. Ms. Rodriguez. Here. Mr. Gorman. Mr. Gorman. Oh, I'm sorry, President. Uh, Ms. Figueroa. Here. Mr. Johnson. Mr. Quattrochi. Present. Mr. DiGiuseppe. Here. Okay. We're going to open this meeting up to public participation. So anybody on this side of the room would like to say anything, go to the podium and state your name and address. If not, don't worry about it. I can comment for you. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> okay. That, that ends public participation. So I have a couple people here from Pond Street, and they're dealing with the Chestnut Street issues. The other day we had another person break in. Uh, I think it was early in the morning. I got a phone call, and I went there. Uh, Chief Moores was there and two more police vehicles. They caught the guy that was breaking. We don't know if they were robbing stuff or using it as a place to to stay Chestnut on Chestnut. So since this all happened, we had two houses left, one on the left side, one on the right side. And we were able to sign an agreement on the left side, which is going to settle. They want to settle before Thanksgiving which is positive, so we're going to buy that house. So that means the left side of the street is 100% purchased now. The right side, there's one house left. I would say that we'll have him under agreement because we showed him a home in Croydon, not the borough, the redevelopment authority, and he's very interested in purchasing this home. So I, I got a feeling that that's going to happen, I would say, in the next 30 days. So once that happens, we will be able to go out to bid and have this property down before, I mean, it's going to come down quick. It's not going to be sitting there in the you know, spring and going into the summer. So that's where we are. I know you're dealing with it. We, you know, I think every time you called me, I showed up. We did everything we can uh, to handle this. It's just taken a lot longer than everybody wanted it to take, but I think it was positive knowing that we were able to, the gentleman passed away, his, was left to his family, the family immediately signed an agreement with the RDA, and like I said, we're going to settlement what, next, I believe uh, Wednesday, next Wednesday, next Wednesday. So, okay, we're trying. We really are, and I know you got you got small kids, and you're, you're tired of putting up with everything. I mean, if you want to say something. What was I going to say? That we go to the, say podium. Get to the podium. Oh. Get out of there. <laughs> In that case, we just want to say thank you. But sometimes, like you go day by day, and you forget that it's back there, and it's it, but it's it becoming dangerous. It makes us uncomfortable, and we've been calling, and we've been getting responses. So we appreciate it. And that's good news. Just keep us posted. And it's on sa it's it's a safety issue. It yes. became now. Just yeah. We just see a lot of people going in and out of the houses. Our neighbor Tim has the ring, so he'll keep us posted. But there's just a lot of kids back there, and they like. Your name and address for the record. Okay. My, I'm Kate Harris at 1090 Pond Street. Thank you. You're, and thank you guys. Anything else? All right, so okay. I'm Tim Brazel from 1021 Pond Street. Um, I was just going to say, yeah, thank you very much. That was a great update. Um, if it would help with anything, I do have a few videos of people being 
shady back there. Um, I think last week I called the police at 2 in the morning because somebody parked a bike and went into one of the houses. So if that would be of help to you guys at all, I'd be happy to email. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I think the it's problem, a ring, so it doesn't give like, very good facial recognition, but uh, it shows. I think what happened last time was uh, Hermie's wife called the police, and they wanted an address, and she didn't have the right address. So she called me. I made a phone call to the chief, and he uh, dispatched everybody out there, and we caught the guy in the act, which was, was good. They moved quick. But uh, I know it's, it's, it's a nuisance. It really is. And I think you put up with this way longer than you should have. And uh, we're doing everything we can as a borough. We're doing everything we can as the RDA. But signing that agreement last week in settlement is, like Jim said, on Tuesday or Wednesday. That takes care of the left side. We're going to get the we're going to get the right side, and I think that's going to happen sooner than than we think. So and that's it. That's coming down. And we have the funds. It isn't like we don't have the funds to do it. Thanks to. Tina Davis and our state rep and state center San Isaro, they got us two million dollars to finish this project with acquisition and demolition. So we're ready to go. It's just a matter of we only can pay so much. We can't say, well, we're going to give you five hundred thousand dollars. It has to be an appraised value to purchase the house for, it. and that's where we are right now. So. Uh, if there is an issue getting the last one, uh, is there any contingency <coughs> plans or something that we have, you know, had in mind to maybe begin the project anyway? Or if we don't get the last one in the next before, I would say the end of this year, then we're going to demo everything and leave one house standing. We're not going to deal with. You're not going to deal with this too much longer. It's coming down. And I know Omi and Stephanie have been dealing with it for a while because she used to send me messages all the time when people were breaking in back there. So we've been trying, but hopefully it'll be sooner than later. Yeah, it was, we thought it was more concerned about COVID, but it seems to be ticking up now more than any time. But uh, like I said, we'll, keep, we'll, we'll get in touch as soon as we see anything back there. Well, you know when you call me. Oh, to your credit, yeah, definitely, definitely worked out. Uh, I mean, the girl always responded. I'm going to go to the podium because they yeah, can't hear you. Yeah, you have to come up here and say your oh, name sorry. and address. Nobody's, I'm getting, oh. yeah, no, I'm saying, no, I'm getting no, taxes no. that nobody can hear you. Oh, I'm saying, well, uh, the borough um, definitely always responded. Um, so definitely credit to them. I feel like maybe at first it wasn't maybe as rapid or, um, or with haste as it should have been. But obviously, the more serious it got, the, the more serious you guys got. I know. They came pretty quick when you called and saw them on the cam. And like I said, we thank goodness we were able to catch them, um, they, you know, in the act and whatever they were doing back there when you guys did get them <clears throat> that one morning. So, you know, it's for us. It's more about the kids than anything else. You know I mean, just just on that street alone, like not even including mine. You know, there's three next door, another one, and not including the kids around the corner. And then you know, a lot a lot come in play. So, you know, it's in your backyard and you still got to watch it's you know it's a little bit it's getting a little long in the tooth but um, other than that though you guys have been responding so if, if you guys are telling us that by the end of the year I think everybody here is excited to hear that so your name please oh uh, Rich Moyet and what's your address uh, 1023 Pond Street I don't have much else to say, though. I do appreciate the rapid responses that we were getting, though. So I definitely will say that. Thank you. Okay. All right. Anything else? That ends public participation. All right. Number one, number two on the agenda. Uh, Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to approve Borough Council minutes 
for 9-11-2023, for 10-2-2023, for 11-6-2023, and for 11-8-2023, and approve the treasurer's report for August of 2023, approve the fire chief's report for September and October of 2023, approve the inspection report for September and October of 2023, approve the public works report for September and October of 2023, approve the police report for September and October of 2023, and approve the HARB report for September and October of 2023. Second. Second by Ms. Rodriguez. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Number three. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to recommend the nomination. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Is this the one? Okay. Number three. Number three. three. To recommend nomination to the Delaware Canal State Park Advisory Committee. And that's, uh, I think it's Scalzo, isn't it, or no? Yes. Who is it? Uh, goes out of your junior, right? All right. Sam, uh, okay, so I'd like to recommend the nomination of Sam Scalzo, Jr. to the Delaware Canal State Park Advisory Committee. Sorry, that's what I was confused about. I second by Mrs. Rodriguez. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Number four. I'd like to make uh, a motion for the approval of resolution updating the Borough Street and sidewalk permit fees. Second by Mrs. Figueroa. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Number five. five. I'd like to make a motion. I'd like to table number five to consider the appointments to the Police Civilian Complaint Review Board. So, John. So there's a table. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Number seven? Six. 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 Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to authorize the resolution to submit an application for a 2023 Department of Community and Economic Development Local Share Account Statewide Program Grant in the amount of $979,000 for the old Group 13 realignment. Second by Ms. Rodriguez. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Number seven. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to authorize a resolution for a grant application for a school track reconstruction in the amount of $485,000. Second by Ms. Figueroa. Questions or comments? That's the grant that we're trying to work with the school board that we're eligible to apply for. Hopefully we're successful and we can get the whole track redone. It's track. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Number eight. Mr. President, I'd like to make a, a motion to adopt the preliminary 2024 municipal budgets. Second by Ms. Figueroa. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Number nine. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to authorize advertising notice of preliminary municipal budgets being available for public view. Uh, second. Second by Mr. Pezza. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Number 10. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to authorize advertising ordinance establishing the tax rate for the 2024 fiscal year for council consideration on December 11th, 2023. By Mr. Petrucci. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Number 11. I'd like to make a motion to authorize advertising an ordinance imposing assessment for the removal of garbage and refuse within Bristol Borough for the year 2024 for council consideration on December 11, 2023. I have a second. Second by Mr. Pezza. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay, before we adjourn, we just want to go, Greg, I don't know if you want to talk about the parade or uh, the tree sure. lighting since you're involved in yeah, it. Yeah, so the, uh, the tree lighting is um, going to start, I said this last week, but I would like to reiterate it. The tree lighting itself is uh, happening the day after um, Thanksgiving, which is November 24th. Um, it will, the tree itself will be lit at 7 o'clock. The festivities will start at 5 o'clock. So I would like to again stress that if you show up at five o'clock, there's gonna be a lot of fun stuff going on for kids and for families, but the tree will not be lit until seven o'clock. So if you're really just interested in the tree being lit, get there by 10 minutes to seven and you'll probably only have to wait about 15 minutes or so. If you're interested in an ice sculpture, if you're interested in local food vendors, if you're interested in uh, live music, if you're interested in a performance by uh, 
young kids who are, are going to be um, you know, dressed in holiday outfits, and, and it's a, a, a dance that has been uh, produced by uh, Valeria, Valerina, I'm sorry, which is right here on Mill Street. Um, she's <coughs> teaching about 18 kids how to do this dance. It should be really cool and cute and fun. Um, that's going to happen all before the tree lighting, and then the tree will be lit at 7 o'clock p.m. Um, I actually haven't spoken yet to the police chief and the emergency manager. We have a meeting tomorrow about what time the street itself will shut down. So we will definitely get that information out to business owners as quickly as we possibly can. We have a meeting on that tomorrow to confirm. Uh, insofar as the parade is concerned, um, somehow I was, uh, well, more so my father, but me as well, uh, dragged into a bit of uh, thought that we had somehow been part of the parade planning. Uh, we have zero to do with it. However, in the midst of um, complaints being registered our way, um, by, I guess by default, we've kind of become the spokesperson for it up here. Um, Ellen Scansella is in charge of the parade. Ellen has done a great job uh, organizing this for many years uh, gone by. And Ellen this year wanted to have a, a place where kids um, with certain you know, disabilities, whether it be autism or um, audio sensory issues, uh, we all know that the parade has some loud fire trucks and some guns that go off, so she wanted to have a silent place for that to happen. Ellen designated the 100 and 200 block of Mill Street, which are the last two blocks of the parade, for that to be. Apparently there was a little bit of confusion about um, whether the um, parade would turn off right at Wood Street, right at Mignoni's Jewelers, and not continue down 200 and 100. Ellen asked us to clarify that it will continue down the 200 and 100 block of Mill Street, just the fire trucks and the guns will not be going off on those two blocks. Everything else will be uh, as it usually is. I would just ask as a result of, the, uh, you know, again, I know not everyone's on Facebook. I highly encourage you to not be in many ways. Um, but uh, I would just encourage everyone to remember that we live in a small town. A lot of people are working hard, and a lot of people are volunteering their time. That includes Ellen Scansella. That includes my father. That includes many members of Raising the Bar. That includes many members of the parade committee. And we are here to support them to fire insults and just things that are just factually incorrect, I think is inappropriate, um, and it takes away from the spirit of the season. So I'm hoping that from this point forward, we move into the holiday season without that spirit in mind because it was inappropriate. Um, but all that being said, we're gonna move forward. The parade's gonna be great. The tree lighting's gonna be great. If you have any questions about the tree lighting, I'm your guy. If you have any questions about the parade, Alan Scansella is your woman. Thank you. So we did talk to Alan several times, and like Greg said, there will be nobody turning off the parade. The parade will continue down Mill Street. Like it always does. Like it always does. The only thing will not be is blasting or the fire, the sirens on the fire trucks, and that 21-gun salute or whatever they, they shoot the, the rifles. But motorcycles, bands, string bands, cars, loud cars, they're going down Mill Street. And we did discuss today with Tara about sitting down like we do at every event, and at the end of every event, figuring how could we make it better next year, and whether it's moving these zones to different areas, uh, it's very possible that once we meet this year that we're going to get all this resolved. So uh, hopefully everybody enjoys everything like Greg said, and we get good weather for Santa Claus to come to town. And I think that's it. Anything else? No. Anybody have anything? Motion to Anything else? <laughs> I want to wish everybody a happy and healthy Thanksgiving. And we'll see you on December 11th for our last meeting of the year. And our first meeting of the year will be <coughs> January 2nd. All the new council and mayor will get sworn in on it's supposed to be the first Monday in January, but since it's the first, by law, you have to get sworn in the next day. So we will have a meeting on the swearing in for January 2nd. Okay?
Mr. Pazza, second by Mrs. Figueroa. Meeting adjourned.